I think a lot of people underappreciate just how much music can change how a film is perceived, or even what that film means. The example I usually give is Star Wars, and just how silly it looks with no music. Or how much worse the film would be with your typical 80s sci-fi music. An excellent example of this, of music changing how a scene is perceived, is in John Williams' score to Empire of the Sun. The story is as follows. Just kidding. The story follows a young British expat boy, Jamie, as he observes the war unfold around him in China. Ultimately, he's split up from his parents, mugged, and winds up spending several years stuck in a Japanese internment camp, watching his fellow inmates and friends get brutally beaten, fall seriously ill, and die. Sounds like a grim, dark, bleak story, right? Well, no, not really. The thing is, this story tells itself entirely through the child's perspective. Jamie is a particularly naive child, and sees far more joy and wonder in the world, where adults would only see darker, starker realities. But how can the film distort our perspective? How can it make us see these grim realities through the eyes of a child? Well, like this. The music consistently gives the film a sense of naivety, wonder, and childlike emotions. One of the main tools for this is the use of a choir of high voices, representing the children's choir we see at the beginning. We hear it with Jamie's excitement when he plays in the downed plane. or later when the camp is being bombed. <laughs> and in his wonder, when he mistakes a nuclear blast for the spirit of Mrs. Victor. Another example of seeing the world through Jamie's eyes. At the beginning of the film, Jamie's mother is playing this music. This is actually a Chopin mazurka, Op. 17, number 4, one of his most famous mazurkas. It's interesting that we always hear the lovely, heartwarming middle section of the piece in this film, and not the lost, heartsick main theme. That always gets filtered out. And so, when we visit the house later, we see things through Jamie's perspective. Jamie hears the piano music, and he truly thinks his mother is inside. Then later, piano music becomes a reminder of home. Though it's the wrong piano music, just as Jamie is unable to remember his parents' faces. The mazurka music is also used brilliantly to accentuate the dramatic dissonance between rich and poor, English and Chinese, of the rich clowns inside the car, against the desperate people outside. But on the whole, the music makes us see the world entirely through Jamie's eyes. We hear a change as it gets scared, such as when he's being chased by a Chinese street urchin. Then we get some Bernstein-esque chase music. Or when he discovers his mother's room has been torn apart, where we get these musical imitations of the Dies Irae chant, the ancient plane chant which has come to be used as a symbol of death or doom in modern music. Dies Irae, Dies Irae.
but it's subtle. It's just a slight bit of fear. Not a full-blown DS era like the one in Home Alone. One final point to make is that through the music, we witness Jamie's confused sense of nationality and patriotism. We see him embracing the plane, and then we feel his great sense of honour as the Japanese pilots salute him. Then, later on, when he's accepted into the American billet, we hear his sense of pride at now being one of the Americans, but what we get is actually a British military song. But perhaps the most memorable thing of all You could be forgiven for thinking that this song was a Chinese song. I mean, I certainly did the first time, but perhaps I'm showing my ignorance. It's actually a Welsh lullaby called Sio Gan. The reason that this might sound Chinese to some is that the melody is entirely pentatonic. The pentatonic scale being the notes 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 of the major scale. A huge amount of traditional Chinese music is based on a version of the pentatonic scale, and so we might be forgiven if we mistook it for Chinese music at first glance, given the context. But then again, a huge amount of folk music from all around the world is based on the pentatonic scale. And perhaps this is the point. In some things, deep down, we are more alike across borders, walls and fences than we might think. And so, when Jamie starts singing this later on, paying respects to the kamikaze pilots, we think, what does it all mean? Why is he moved to sing this song? Chinese, Japanese, American, British, it doesn't really matter. Because in his naivety, he strikes something profound and even unsettling within us something that perhaps could only be unveiled through the innocence of a child. I really enjoyed making this video and thanks so much to Daniel Herron for the great suggestion. I can't believe that I hadn't seen this film before. If any of you want to make suggestions for a film, a piece, a topic about music, then you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash inside the score. I hugely appreciate the support that keeps this channel going. It makes all the difference, so if you'd like to say thank you, buy me a coffee, or help this channel continue to make content like this in the future, then you can consider supporting me on Patreon. If you like this channel, then do subscribe, share it with your friends, and tell me what you thought. Thanks so much for watching.